Thank you. What do you value? How do you express your values in everything that you do? In your career, in your research, in your relationships, and in the mundane details of your day-to-day -day routine? I value health, personal health, environmental health, and financial health. I value curiosity and learning. I value the relationships that I grow and maintain with the people that I love. I value creating a world where everybody feels safe, loved, supported, and valued. So now that you know what inspires me, let me tell you a little bit about who I am. So I value personal health. I hate going to the gym. I consistently make poor diet choices. And I overschedule myself so I don't get enough sleep every night. I value environmental health, but I fly a lot. I drive a lot. I don't use renewable power, and I have a high consumption lifestyle compared to most people around the world. I value financial health, but I have trouble sticking to a budget, and I struggle with impulse buying. I value curiosity and learning, but given the chance, I'll stay in and watch Netflix all day instead of getting started on my research or the assignments for a graduate program I'm passionate about. I value the relationships that I grow and maintain with the people I care about, but I let my day-to-day -day responsibilities and tasks take precedence over spending time with the people I love. And I value creating a world where everybody feels safe, heard, loved, and valued, but I run around acting stressed, busy, and impatient with the needs of the people around me. So I began asking myself the question, how can I live a life that's closer to my values? Around the time that I began asking that question, I participated in a program called the Byron Fellowship. And that helped me learn to develop and express my personal vision. And I continue to be inspired by the people who are part of that community, who strive to express their values in everything that they do. So as a result of that, I began to look at my behavior, my personal choices, in the context of the question, how can I live a life closer to my values? So around that time, I discovered Jay Schaefer, his tumbleweed tiny home, and I was inspired. So tiny homes are traditional stick-built structures um, on a trailer, so they're mobile. They're generally about eight feet wide and can range in length from 12 feet to 40 feet. Mine is about 20 feet long, which is around the average. They are about 13 and a half feet tall and can't go taller than that because of federal highway restrictions. Um, they incorporate all of the same things that you would find in a traditional home in a small and compact space. So I fell in love with the concept of tiny houses, and I spent hours online learning about construction and design, which is something I had no experience or formal training in. I learned about codes and regulations for building tiny homes. But what was most interesting to me was learning about the people who made the choice to live in tiny houses. So people decide to live in tiny homes for a number of different reasons. Some people seek financial freedom. Maybe they lost their home to divorce or disaster or uh, foreclosure, um, and they're seeking to live a life with more financial freedom. So freedom from debt, freedom from mortgages, um, freedom from loans, freedom from rent. Others, maybe freelancers, seek to have a more mobile lifestyle so that they can move from location to location when their projects change. Some really were inspired by the environmental um, impact reduction that tiny homes represent. So they're inherently less resource consumptive compared to, to traditional homes. And I really identified with that. Other people saw tiny homes as the ultimate survivalist shelter to protect themselves and their families in case of war, um, disease, or even a zombie apocalypse. I also met a woman who had multiple chemical sensitivity, and she found relief through uh, to her suffering through building a tiny home out of safe and stable materials, which is cost prohibitive in a traditionally sized house. I was particularly inspired by Ella Jenkins, who was a 23-year-old harpist um, who decided to build a tiny home so that she could live in Northern California, which is traditionally a very expensive real estate market on a harpist's salary. And the one thing all these people had in common is that they were expressing their values through their decision to live in a small home. So I'm from the Midwest, but I grew up in Switzerland, which um, has values of um, environmental protection, 
resource conservation, and they get expressed through their policies and through their social norms. But one of the most interesting places that value is expressed is in their average house size, which is a lot smaller than the one that we have here, the ones that we have here in the U.S. So a lot of things go into this figure, the average residential space per person, but I think that um, a large part of this figure is environmental consciousness and the concern over natural resource use. I've seen lots of houses online and visited homes personally that are 200 square feet where people live happy, comfortable, and fulfilling lives. And that proves to me that it's possible to live in a small space and still do everything that you love. So with all of this in mind, I challenged myself to design a home that incorporated the things that I value and reflected my personal beliefs. So after a year of um, difficulty and excitement and fear um, that involved lots of bumps, bruises, scrapes, sweat, and tears, and blood, um, I now get to live in a beautiful micro home where everything that I value is intentionally and thoughtfully incorporated in a tiny and harmonious space. So it's important to me to be able to entertain people, cook for people, um, and have them stay over at my home. So you can see here an eating space that comfortably seats six, but those are two twin mattresses, so it also allows me to have people stay over at my house. I have a queen-size bed in the loft and an ample floor space for an air mattress, so I've actually managed to have six people and a dog stay over in my home before. It was cramped. <laughs> It was important for me to people, or for people to feel comfortable when they visited my home, and so I wanted to have a full-size bathroom. I have a composting toilet, which allows me to park my house anywhere, even if there is a traditional plumbing infrastructure. Um, I repurposed a horse trough as a lightweight and quirky-looking bathtub, and I have a laboratory sink with a storage space underneath, which provides um, room for me to store toiletries and amenities out of sight so the space doesn't feel cluttered. Instead of a traditional door, a swinging door that takes up a bit of floor space, I opted for a pocket door, which cuts the space off and provides privacy um, without taking up too much room. I love to cook, so it was important to me to have, um, to be able to cook all of my favorite dishes. So I have a two burner stove, I have a small fridge, which incentivizes me to pre-plan meals because only so much food can fit there, and I have a full, uh, full size kitchen sink. I also have a toaster oven, which in addition to toasting, um, also bakes, broils, roasts, and reheats. So when you live in a tiny house, you have to downsize. And one of the most difficult things for me was downsizing my wardrobe. And this was a months long process, but I've ended up with a wardrobe of pieces that I value and that I wear often. Um, and it all fits in a two foot by two foot closet. So now I have a rule that if somebody gives me or if I purchase a new piece of clothing, I have to donate one to maintain that stasis. So I wanted a house full of natural light so that it didn't feel small and cramped. And so I designed uh, most of my windows into one side of my home. This way um, I can take advantage of the passive solar heat in the winter. And in the summer I have two windows up by my bed that I can open to provide a cross breeze and let excess heat escape. So I heat my home with propane and I cook with propane and I heat the water with propane. There isn't water to the property, so I bring water in in a 65-gallon tank, which is stored in two 30-gallon tanks above my shower. So I shower at the gym, and I cook one-pot meals, things that don't take too much water to clean up as a way to conserve. I only fill up my water tanks probably once every few weeks. Um, I have a backup battery, which powers my essentials, my water pump and my carbon monoxide and gas alarm, um, in case I lose power in a storm. How can I live a life closer to my values? So after a year of designing and building and living in a tiny home, I'm making progress on, on that question. So I value environmental health. I've built a home that systematically reduces the resource that I consume without reducing my happiness, my comfort, or my safety. I value personal health. So I've built a life where I go to the gym every morning I um, pre-plan my meals every week so that I don't, um, so I eat much healthier. And I also tend to um, get more sleep every night because I don't have internet at my house. I don't stay up watching shows late or surfing the internet. I value financial health. So I took the money that I would have spent on rent for graduate school and invested it into building my home. And if the current market for tiny houses holds, when it's time for me to sell it, I'll more than double my investment. I value the relationships that I grow and maintain with the people that I care about. So I've 
swallowed my pride and asked my community for help um, in building my home. And thanks to their contributions, I now have a lifestyle where I can spend more time with the people I care about. I value curiosity and learning, so I've built a life for myself where I can pursue graduate degrees at an institution that uh, shares my values of environmental and community health. I value creating a world where everybody feels loved, supported, understood, and valued. And my friends and family will tell you that I'm still working on this. But I'm actively trying to let go the stress that I create for myself when I need everything to be perfect. So I look back at my construction plans, my timeline, and my budget, and I laugh now because a construction project is a perfect thing to break you out of the desire to control everything. Um, I've realized that when I show up stressed, I create stress for other people. And when I show up at ease and excited, I create a positive environment for the people that I interact with, which is more consistent with who I want to be and the world I want to create. So how can I live a life closer to my values? Right now, the answer to that question is to live in a tiny home. But that might not always be the case. And my vision might not be your vision. Maybe your vision is to raise a family of 10 children, and that wouldn't work in a tiny home. Maybe you value a world of um, economic sustainability or financial literacy. Maybe you value a world of social justice and equality or creating close-knit communities. Whatever it is you value, what would it look like if you expressed your values in everything that you did? What would it look like if all of us expressed our values, our vision, in everything that we did? How can I live a life closer to my values? So I'll leave you with a quote from Howard Thurman, which is profoundly inspirational to me. Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive, and then go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Thank you.